compare the hardness properties or hardness of a material and how it will be useful you know for you know quantify uh, for quality assessment of a material okay now uh, uh, can you please uh, tell us that uh, uh, what do you mean by hardness of a material means how you can define a hardness of a material irrespective of the definition that i have given here Are you listening? Hello. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. sir. It is the ability of a material to resist any type of indentation or scratch or any other type of deformation, surface deformation. I mean. Okay, so that means it will depend on your perspective. Means uh, what is your objective? Based on that, you can define it in different way. So it is. Uh, it is actually uh, the hardness term. Uh, uh, it is a very broad uh, sense you can think of like you know uh, you, you can define from uh, from you know personal point of view you can define from you know uh, uh, material perspective you can define okay mm -hmm. so it is it is a uh, it, it, it is a poorly defined uh, term hardness okay uh, just like just like it has, uh, it has many meanings depending upon the experience of of the person so that is involved. Okay, and in general, hardness you can usually implies the resistance to deformations, whether it is plastic deformations or elastic, elastic deformation. And uh, you know, for material perspective, if you think, then um, the the terms come like uh, the resistance to plastic deformation. Okay, because why plastic? Because whenever you uh, you try to indent something or you try to do some uh, deformations on a material material uh, you know the deformation will proceed uh, from elastic to plastic deformations and when you release the load then elastic will recover okay then uh, you know then you can avoid the elastic deformation part but uh, you will be able to measure the plastic deformations or the change in shape uh, which has permanently deformed um, and uh, that that is why the plastic deformations um, actually dictates the value uh, of of a material that that uh, that represents the hardness of a material. Now, <clears throat> now there are several methods of you know measuring the hardness of a material. Like uh, you can do the uh, the measurement of hardness by scratching over over the sample surface. Okay, that means how. Or the material uh, resist during scratching. Okay, so for example, like um, if you see that farmers are plowing uh, over the over the field to 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 cultivate uh, the crops. Okay, so there you know uh, depending on the strength of a material uh, uh, soil and uh, depending on the the hardness of that soil, uh, you have to this farmer have to apply some pressures. Uh, such that uh, they can they can dig up uh, a sig with having a significant depth okay and uh, they can easily uh, plow and to make the soil loose okay so that means uh, depending on the hardness uh, the, the farmers generally apply the load okay and but here for material perspective you know we don't want to deform the metal we, we should not want to deform the metal always your objective should be to have the material properties such that it gives the high hardness it gives the high strength values it gives the high you know the toughness values uh, that is why and because of that now you will be able to use uh, that particular material for you know for uh, uh, for sustaining um, at, at a very longer you know period of time as well as it can be able to sustain or it can be able to carry a high amount of load large amount of load okay so, so from uh, from design perspective or from you know for material development perspective you should have the higher uh, hardness values as well as higher scratch hardness values higher you know resistance to indentation uh, hardness values 
okay so all these things you need to uh, uh, yeah, all these values should have the higher values now apart from this crash hardness how we can quantify it we can quantify it by measuring uh, the the depth of scratch by measuring uh, the the width of scratch okay uh, and of course it will be depending on the load uh, because if you want to apply the more and more amount of load then obviously the depth of scratch will be more so in general what we do we try to fix the load um, and uh, and when for that whatever indenter we generally use so that indenter should be fixed uh, 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 and then we try to compare uh, whenever we uh, go for any comparisons so like uh, when we have the two different metal and, and to find out that uh, we can have the higher scratch resistance properties so uh, we try to maintain the same load and the same indenter and then try to find out the difference between depth of in depth of you know um, scratch and width of scratch and therefore by comparing these two we try to um, determine the which should have which have the higher scratch hardness so similar phenomena can also be done by doing uh, by finding out the resistance of indentation where we try to put some compressive load on the sample surface and here you can find the difference between the compressions and the resistance to indentation okay because in compressions we try to compress all the samples but here we try to compress on a on a on a particular spot means localized compression uh, test you can think of okay so uh, so and then we try to find out that how materials are resisting to to that compressive load okay it means uh, how you know, materials are resisting to the plastic deformations okay and based on that we try to evaluate the hardness property now any and other things we can any other way we can do uh, or we can measure the hardness just like the dynamic or rebounding hardness testing means where we continuously increase the load just like the tensile testing means so we are controlling the load okay uh, means uh, giving the tensile force but here uh, we will uh, continue control continuously control the load by putting or by applying the compressive load okay it is also one sort of indentation type of um, uh, testing but uh, here uh, for indentation type of means resistance to indentation this particular procedure we try to fix the load and then we try to find out that uh, uh, how much depth has gained um, for that particular fixed loading conditions and uh, for a particular you know indenter uh, using a indent particular indenter so so that is the difference between this dynamic rebounding hardness and the resistance uh, to indentation so for measuring the hardness now we will talk about uh, these things in detail especially in this particular course we will talk about the resistance to indentation uh, by which we measure the hardness <clears throat> now the accompanying factors so that is uh, most important for uh, you know quantitatively qualitatively measuring or qualitatively assessing any material performance uh, like uh, if you uh, found that the strength of a material is high so then you can uh, uh, you know think of that your hardness uh, would be can, uh, would be high okay or the vice versa things can also happen okay and uh, <clears throat> you can also think of that when uh, your hardness or the strength of a material is high then maybe the ductility will be low or the toughness uh, uh, will be deteriorate okay and materials will be prone to brittle fractures if you exceed a critical load okay and similarly the opposite things can also happen like if your material is relatively soft then your materials uh, you know, materials gives the lower hardness value that means uh, the materials will deform quite easily and you you will get a more and more extension as compared to the metals which gives the higher hardness value so these are the parallel factors uh, along um, uh, which which can change parallelly or which can you know interfere the properties uh, with each other <coughs> now uh, previously when <coughs> uh, our early decades we try to compare the hardness uh, just by uh, doing this scratching uh, 
one over other okay and uh, that particular process has been developed by researcher Morse and uh, and based on that he has given certain numbers you may uh, heard about like more hardness uh, scale uh, like more hardness number from that is very from 1 to 10 and uh, there you will find that uh, for very hard materials and he gives a maximum hardness values like 10 uh, that is for diamond okay and here all the list are given like diamond is 10 more hardness number 10 uh, then corundum topaz so all are actually giving a certain different number values now by seeing those numbers one can understand that which one is high which ones have the hard, uh, high hardness which one have the lower hardness values and all that or which which materials is uh, uh, is softer which materials is harder okay but uh, you know it is very relative parameters means um, uh, in certain cases you, it will be very difficult to identify uh, the the difference between the two materials hardness okay just like if i talk about uh, the 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 hardness of steel okay you know today's uh, scenario will find the different uh, you know different steels are available like uh, mild steel to high strength steel to armor steel okay so you know all these steels have the different hardness values but here if you follow the more hardness scale now so then it will be very difficult to identify that uh, where uh, we can place the the steel I means so what would be the more hardness scale more hardness number for steel and uh, for steel actually they put the hardness values or more hardness number that lies within three to four Okay, so uh, if you put the mild steel more hardness number, if it is three, and if you put the armor hardness steels number that is four, then what will be the value of you know cast iron? What will be the value of uh, the the the, uh, the the paralytic steel? So it will be very difficult to distinguish. So that is why uh, you know that is the most uh, you know limiting factors. Uh, for assessing a material performance following the more hardness number okay so therefore people try to develop the another hardness testing procedure uh, which will be more acceptable for the people and by following those you know process uh, one can easily assess uh, the easily differentiate the hardness of two different material okay so therefore the indentation you know hardness um, techniques comes and uh, people and and, um, and try to follow uh, this indentation hardness testing methods uh, for the assessing the material performance and uh, and uh, try to analyze uh, that how during indentations how the materials are deforming and what are the responsible factors uh, for for you know changing the hardness values uh, following this indentation hardness uh, uh, which are actually incapable, which is incapable. So, uh, if we follow the more hardness process, okay. Now comes uh, the, the the correct procedure or how we can do the indentation hardness. We can we can do the test. Uh, so, in this particular test uh, indentation hardness testing process, uh, we try to fix the load, okay. And uh, and this techniques involves uh, some depth of penetrations. Um, means, means certain cases, uh, certain procedures, we need to measure the depth of penetration. In certain cases, we need to measure the surface area of the indentations. And so whatever, you know, impressions we try to put on the sample surface. So that surface area we try to measure then uh, based on the load, applied load and the surface area, we try to calculate a certain numbers, hardness numbers, which we call it. Okay. In some certain cases, we try to uh, measure the projected area. Means if we think about the 2D surface area, then uh, obviously that would be the projected area of the indentation. So, so by measuring those projected areas, also we can we can get some values, and based on uh, those values, we can easily compare the hardness of two different materials. <coughs> Now there are three different process by which we can do this indentation testing process. Like um, uh, the peoples have developed those process at different uh, time periods. Okay, so one of the most important process is the rock oil test procedure. And um, if you follow the 
you know each and every testing process uh, um, the each and every process have certain standard means you know people generally try uh, to establish you know certain phenomena so uh, first they do some trial and error methods and then finally they will come to an conclusions and they try to you know put some you know, some some rules uh, to the international community research community that if we follow only this particular process then only you will be ass assess a material quite accurately okay uh, so therefore um, uh, in this way, actually, any particular any standard has any standard develops, and uh, research community before accepting those standard research community international research community give their comments and and um, the, the comments actually based on uh, the pros and cons of the the testing process. Uh, so different standards generally comes um, generally comes out um, to the. Uh, to the research community and then they pick up one suitable standard um, and uh, they recommend it to follow uh, during testing process during testing okay uh, to the uh, to the research and to the researcher okay so here uh, for the rock oil testing process uh, first it was first introduced in 1990 by stanley rockwell and uh, it was implemented uh, uh, one year later okay and um, and um, an industry people accept it um, and then um, uh, it it comes uh, uh, and it it was easily and then uh, people try to follow that particular process uh, which is quite acceptable okay now uh, what is that particular process uh, means how we can do that or how we can follow the rock oil testing process uh, we can we can follow this uh, rock oil testing process um, uh, where uh, where people, where uh, they have recommended that if we use uh, the two different indenters, like one is steel indenters and one is diamond indenter, so there has certain purpose. You know, for different materials have the different hardness values. So, like if you have very hard material, then we cannot use the steel ball indenter because what will happen in that particular cases? Maybe the steel ball uh, will during indentations or during applying the load. Uh, then the steel ball will come into contact with the sample sample surface uh, which you are measuring the hardness uh, which, uh, over which you are trying to put some indentations but before uh, you know indenting your samples your indenter will deform then you will not be able to measure uh, the hardness properly so that is why um, you know rock, uh, the, the stanley rockwell recommended uh, the other indenter that is the diamond indenter uh, which is very hard um, and uh, it has certain specification of this indenter has certain specifications like the cone angles is 120 degree okay uh, so 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 if we if we follow this indenter and then if we apply a fixed load specific load then we will get uh, the different depth of indentations okay and this depth of indentations can generally measure uh, by uh, reading some dials okay so i will show you in the next slide that uh, how uh, by measuring uh, the depth of indentation can be measured by reading those dial now if we uh, if we um, now if we go for measuring the soft uh, the hardness of soft material then of course for a specific load uh, that i previously fixed so if we use that particular load then for soft materials the depth of indentation should be high so therefore uh, you know we cannot we cannot go uh, or we cannot uh, we should not get the depth of indentation which is excessively high then uh, then it will create some problem so that is why you know they have recommended to have uh, a indenter which is uh, the steel balls indenters and uh, they have also manipulate the load load requirement okay uh, and uh, whenever we try to compare the hardness following the rock oil testing machines then they recommended that you should follow only one uh, you know specific load and one specific indenter then only you will be able to compare uh, for a um, for for softer materials just like copper aluminium and uh, mild steel okay uh, uh, for 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 comparing the hardness you can follow only one specific you know methods okay or one specific indenter and one specific load Now here, uh, what is the basic, uh, you know, uh, 
the benefits of you know or what are the correct procedure uh, for measuring the rockwell hardness test first uh, you need to uh, you need to apply some minor load okay and uh, uh, if you see the schematic of the, uh, of the machines then you will find this is the basic schematic of the machines and this is the test piece and uh, this is the steel ball indenter and this is a dial okay so uh, what we do what uh, first we uh, we try to settle the space and uh, test space uh, such that initially it uh, the steel ball touches the sample surface okay and uh, uh, if we restrict the movement lateral movement of the test phase then we have to apply certain minor load so in rockwell hardness test we generally put the minor load of let's say for 10 kilo okay and we must uh, be assured that at 10, 10 kilo load there should not have any plastic deformation so no plastic deformation should happen okay only the elastic deformations uh, could happen but that particular elastic deformations uh, will restrict the lateral movement of the test twist okay um, now after settling that particular uh, things uh, what do we do we try to put the major load okay and major loads can be applied uh, from 60 kilo to you know 100 kilo to 150 kilo uh, that will depend depend on the hardness of the uh, the test piece okay and then we try to measure the depth of indentation now the depth of indentation can be measured by reading the dial okay if we see the dial then we will find that for different uh, uh, is that the is that spring and niche jeta ache eta spring no eta uh, it is spring no actually jokhon amra end wheel ta eta actually ekta end wheel so end wheel ta ke jokhon amra lift korbo tokhon by rotating uh, 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 niche ekta dekho rotating rotate korar ekta part thakbe so eta ke amra rotate kore ei end wheel ta ke lift kori upore dike tuli ha to upore dike tolar jonno eta actually ekta thread type bolte paro eta threaded part jeta ke amra upore dike korte pare উপর নিচে করতে পারি কারণ ইন্ডেন্টারের পজিশনটা ফিক্সড থাকে মিন্স ইন্ডেন্টারের যে পজিশনটা থাকে সেটা মোটামুটি ফিক্সড থাকে বিফোর দ্য টেস্ট বিফোর দ্য ইন্ডেন্টেশন ওকে অ্যান্ড হোয়েন উই ডু সাম ইন্ডেন্টেশন দেন ইট উইল শিফট এ লিটল বিট ওকে অ্যান্ড দ্যাট ইজ অলসো দ্যাট পার্টিকুলার ট্রাভেল ইজ অলসো ফিক্সড ওকে ফর এ পার্টিকুলার ইন্ডেন্টেশন টেস্টিং মেশিন ওকে সো দেয়ার ফর therefore uh, if you have the different sizes specimen na, so then you have to lift accordingly okay like one cases you find you have the sample thickness let's say for 10 mm and other cases you uh, you have the sample thickness for 100 mm so so how you will adjust uh, the, the the gap between this sample in the sample and the indented surface so you do you have to rotate or you have to lift this end wheel uh, to the upward direction and then you will adjust the gap um, between these two interface okay and um, whenever you uh, you are assured means you, you will be assured uh, that if the sample has just touches the indented surface then you have to be so sure, sure that no lateral movement will happen and how you will fix that you have to put some minor load okay and if you whenever you put some minor load then you are just intentionally uh, create uh, putting some force on the sample surface and and the care has to be taken that that particular force should not exceed the ill stress of the material or that particular force should not exceed uh, or should not be responsible for the plastic deformation or the permanent deformations of the material okay now that's a dial type ever bolbe ki measure korte dial ta dial ta ami bole debo so basically dial ta jokhon when we try to put some major load then you know dial will uh the, the the indicator will shift accordingly or according to the depth of indentation okay now here if you see the dial uh, then it is not so clearly visible so whenever you find uh, in your laboratory that uh, there has certain dial then dial has you know different divisions whether it is 100 divisions or 50 division and each divisions have a certain certain values okay like <clears throat> whenever we think of like 100 division then each divisions will represent a uh, certain depth of indentation okay and uh, um, and whenever you find that uh, your total um, uh, the dial readings is showing like 60 division then <clears throat> then you have to multiply uh, the each uh, you know uh, indenter reading with with 60 and then you will find out the total depth of indentations of the of the specimen okay
for the specimen. And then uh, uh, if you compare the two or three different samples, then you try to uh, find out uh, that uh, how much depth variation has happened for three different samples. Now for Rockwell's, uh, Rockwell uh, testing, whenever you find that it has the 100 divisions, then uh, each division will represent the depth of indentation of like 0 0.00008 inches. Okay. So <clears throat> then uh, uh, if you find that your um, uh, your samples shows like 60 division, then uh, you have to multiply 60 into uh, these values uh, to get the accurate, uh, you know, um, accurate depth of indentation. Okay. Now... Uh, this should be different for the, the two types of indenters for the steel ball and the diamond cone the depth of can it yeah yeah steel ball and diamond cone um, like uh, uh, like uh, means uh, uh, whenever we go for the rockwell hardness testing now so there are three different major three different scales are available like rockwell a i will talk about uh, talk these things later on uh, so so three scale have the three different reading like um, uh, like for Rockwell A scale, no? so you will find uh, it will divide it uh, uh, from uh, from zero to um, like. Just hold on. Yeah, for Rockwell A scale, it will generally vary from from zero to uh, Rockwell R A zero. Means generally would represent any hardness values. Now, so either we can put it like R R A scale or uh, uh, Rockwell A scale or Rockwell B scale or Rockwell C scale. For Rockwell A scale, total divisions you will find like it will vary from zero to sixty. In case of Rockwell B, you will find the division is seventy to uh, zero, twenty to seventy. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, uh, 0 to 100 in Rockwell C scale, you will find it will vary from 20 to 70. So the division is based on the, 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 the hardness of the samples. As I say, for Rockwell A scale, you can use the barrel indenter where you can use the diamond cone. And you know, the diamond cone is very hard, so uh, it will not deform, okay? But the, it will deform the samples. So therefore, you can you can uh, you can take the hardness of uh, you know for very soft material as well as for very hard material. Okay, but whenever you go for comparison for soft metal to hard metal, then sometimes you will create some problems. Like you have a soft metal having thickness of 10 mm, and you have the hard metal the similar thickness. Okay, and you are putting the load, let's say for 60 kilo or 100 kilo or uh, I would say the 150 kgf, then uh, if you, uh, as I said that uh, always whenever you go for any compression, you have to fix the load, okay? Now, for hardness, for harder material, uh, you know that you have to put the maximum amount of load or uh, the higher amount of load. So, uh, that is why you choose the load that is, let's say, for 150 kilo. Now, the problem would come when uh, you uh, do the hardness test or you go for the hardness for soft material using those 150 kilo. Okay, maybe uh, the depth of indentations will exceed uh, a certain critical values and therefore you will not be able to measure the accurate hardness values or you will not be able to compare the hardness from soft to harder material. Okay, now what will create some problem? Uh, for soft material which we ha which have the thickness of 10 mm maybe the depth of or let's say uh, your sample thickness of 2 mm maybe the depth of indentations is more than 1 mm okay so that means in that particular cases what will happen your you know anvil means over which you put the samples so the anvil will interact for uh, changing the hardness values okay it means uh, you are putting some compression on the sample surface so you first your sample will compress sample localized compression will happen then you, the, your samples will also force uh, the the anvil to deform okay but you know your if your anvil is very hard 
then it will the the the, the opposite force will react and the opposite force will um, change the so uh, which is providing the opposite force means sir dharo tumi jodi ekta envelope er sample rakho na ebar sample thickness jodi khub kom hoy but tumi jodi major load ta apply karo na tale ki hobe tomar sample to deform hobe but tar shonge shonge mane oi sample er niche je best envelope ta rakha ache mane jar upore tumi sample ta rekhecho sei setao deform korar chesta korbe setao deform korar chesta korbe because you are putting a max higher amount of load okay but you know always we think of that uh the end wheel or over which we put the sample that should be very hard just like in tensile testing amra ki kori je grip grip er madhye sample ta ke dhorar chesta kore sample tensile sample ta ke ha ebar amra ki kori je grip er je material property se material property should be very high or very good enough such that grip should not deform so similarly here also je end wheel er upore amra sample ta ke put korbo sei end wheel er hardness ta khub high hoy তো সেই জন্য যখন সফট মেটেরিয়ালের উপরে যখন হার্ডনেস টেস্ট করতে যাব সফট মেটেরিয়ালটা যখন ডিফর্ম করবে সো ওই সেই ডিফরমেশনের রিফ্লেকশনটা তোমার ওই এনভিলের উপরেও পড়বে সো যখন এনভিলটা যখন ডিফর্ম করতে চাইবে বাট এনভিল উইল উইল হ্যাভ দ্য মোর রেজিস্ট্যান্স টু ডিফরমেশন সো সো দ্য অপোজিট ফোর্স উইল ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট मींस অপোজিট ফোর্স मींस এনভিলটা তো ডিফর্ম করতে চাইবে না সো ইট উইল ক্রিয়েট সাম অপোজিট ফোর্স অর ইট উইল ইউ নো it will not deform so amra je hardness value ta jeta pabo soft material er that is the combination of soft material as well as the envil hardness okay so that is why we will not get the accurate hardness value for softer material emon noy je hoyto soft material ta puro ta penetrate kore gelo the envil envil er ge touch korlo the envil ta mane resist korche for further deformation some sob somoy erokom nao hote pare because Uh, as we see that whenever we go for the plastic deformation some strain hardening will happen and this strain hardening will you know increase the load bearing capacity when though for soft material but soft material has has also some strain you know load bearing capacity okay so therefore the 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 uh, the, the interactions of 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 the soft metal as well as the hard metals hard base uh, hard envils will interfere to change the hardness of soft metal so that is why we try to um, uh, use certain you know certain scale or we try to follow certain rockwell scale where we can manipulate the load like uh, for for softer materials we can use the rockwell b scale okay uh, where we can use the steel ball soft steel ball as an indenter and we can reduce the load from 150 kilo to 100 kilo okay um 150 kilo to 60 kilo 150 kilo to uh, you know for 150 kilo uh, uh, for 40 kilo okay so so in different uh, we have divided or people have divided uh, that general things into different sections such that categorize we can choose a, a particular testing process and uh, and um, and and before that we should know about the particular range for that particular testing process and based on that we 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 go for the testing uh, for selecting those selected met, selected metals okay or selected metal parts so i will show you that uh, how we can do that so i am talking constant dial am add kore dewe ya and will hardness er jonne sorry Uh, so that is why we add a certain constant to the dial gauge for the hardness of the anvil Yeah, that is why actually what we do uh, we we try to maintain the certain thickness okay of a material whenever we go for testing na we uh, the people uh, the in the rockwell testing procedure you will find that they have fixed certain sample thickness uh, you should have the sample thickness uh, at least that particular value or more than that value so i will talk about this things in later slide first see uh, first see that how Uh, or uh, how we can categorize this uh, <coughs> this rockwell scale okay or how we can divide it the rockwell scale based on the load or based on the indenter or based on the sample hardness so uh, you know whenever we go for rockwell a scale so there you can set the major load of 60 kilo you can major set the major load of you know 100 kilo you can set the major load of uh, load of 150 kilo also okay though here you can find 
that low divisions you will find like um, for rock oil C, for rock oil D, they have also used a barrel indenter where uh, barrel indenter uh, means indenter is made of diamond. Okay, it means at the tip, uh, it's made of diamond and it has certain tip radius. But uh, <coughs> overall in the book of data, you will find that in rock oil A scale, we can state the, the, the load 60 kilo, 150 kilo or 100 kilo. Okay, so that means if you follow this rock oil A scale, or Rockwell C scale or D scales, you will cover um, you will cover all the material, okay. But specifically, when you go for the soft material, uh, then of course you have to go for the Rockwell B scale, okay. And in Rockwell B scale, when whatever you know uh, uh, materials you want to go for hardness testing, you have to keep it mind that it should not exceed the uh, the the in the number Rockwell B number that generally varies from 0 to 100 that is RB 0 to RB 100 so whenever you found that uh, the RB numbers you are getting that exceeds you know 100 or uh, the value says less than 0 then you cannot uh, measure uh, the hardness using Rockwell B scale then you can you need to go for the either Rockwell D scale or Rockwell C scale okay or even Rockwell A scale okay so that is uh, in that way you can think of now certain cases whenever you found that your materials uh, thickness is very very low or your material thickness is small in that particular cases you can you can um, minimize the major load as well as you can minimize the minor load also okay like <clears throat> if your materials have the very thin uh, you know material thickness is very small let's say for 2 mm or 1 mm then of course uh, your major load should be uh, as low as as minimum as possible like 15 kilo 30 kilo or even 45 kilo okay and similarly you have to maintain the minor that is for 3 kilo okay 3 kgf so so that is because you uh, the the indent the impression should not interact uh, from one surface to the another surface because if it goes from one surface to another surface then uh, then your uh, you know envil will interact for changing the hardness values so that is why people have uh, set uh, the certain thumb rules like uh, keep the indentations um, two to uh, two to three times diameter apart uh, like uh, whenever you go for the indentation so it should not um, you should not take only one hardness test you should not take only one hardness rather you have to take a multiple hardness means at, a, at the same surface area okay uh, but uh, the two indenters should be two to three uh, you know diameter apart okay such that uh, two indenters should not interact with each other if two in indentation inden uh, indentation will interact with each other then the strain hardening will come into the pictures and due to having the strain hardening uh, you know uh, you will not get means quite exact values hardness values for same material now apart from these things your sample thickness uh, should be more than uh, you know 10 mm thickness okay or uh, 10 to 8 time um, 8 time diameters okay such that um, whatever load you are applying that particular load is not responsible for uh, interactions or for uh, 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 for for getting the impression from one surface uh, to another surface okay if you see this particular examples that how penetration happens uh, then it will be clear to you like whenever you put the minor load it just touches the sample surface but no plastic deformation should happen okay uh, if you release the minor load then it will again um, uh, the, the, the penetrations will again rebound and again the leveling will maintain but if you put the major load then you know, the indentations will happen um, certainly and uh, uh, if you put a certain depth uh, so if you if you set the thickness of the specimen uh, sufficiently then that particular tip uh, uh, indented tip should not interact with the other face okay or other surface of that particular specimen okay so that is why people have set at this particular d values or the thickness value that should be 10 times or 8 times of the uh, the diameter of, uh, or the diameter of the indenter or the diameter of the tip radius okay if you use the barrel barrel indenter then of course it is not a round steel ball rather uh, the geometry of the barrel indenters would be like this so in this particular case the tip radius is important 
for choosing the sample thickness. <clears throat> okay, now the limitations is for the steels, if you find that your HRD scale, like if you use the Rockwell, um, if you follow the Rockwell A hardness testing procedure, there if you uh, use a major scale of 60, 60 kgf, then if you found that your HRA values is greater than 60, then um, then you can use the Rockwell C scale. But if you find the HRA values less than 60, then you can use the Rockwell B scale. Okay, here it is to Boja Chester Boro, Japon Tonadoro, Rockwell A scale use for Vena. So, you know that Rockwell A scale, I'm a parallel inventor use for it. So, any sort of load we can use it. Um, uh, but the problem is Japon, they get Jacono testing a range on a Boro Vajana, the one scattered on a Bessie Hoy. So, say scattered tech avoid corrosion of what we will do, we try to. Uh, uh, make a division such that small scatter uh, or uh, the small loading range or small um, change in depth we generally maintain. Okay, so that is why I can have a lot of the door of oil to uh, material and hardness gases for a gentleman. I'm not a giant as a pun material initially. I'm not a gentleman. You which materials have the high hardness, which materials have the low hardness. So, first we try to assess the material following uh, rock oil A scale. Okay. And then we try to find out uh, that what is the value, Rockwell A value. So if we find that Rockwell A value is greater than 60, then that means uh, uh, in that particular cases, we can we can choose uh, like Rockwell C scale where uh, we can we can fix the we can fix the uh, dial range from uh, Rockwell uh, means RC20 to RC70. Okay. Uh, and of course, each and every scale, like Rockwell A scale, Rockwell B scale, Rockwell C scale, uh, the, each divisions have the different values. Okay, for Rockwell C scales we generally choose for higher hardened material, but in case of Rockwell B scale, we choose for softer material. Okay, means where we find that Rockwell A number which is giving less than 60. So in that particular cases, we choose the Rockwell B scale, and there, um, going there. Uh, we, we need to find out that Rockwell B hardness that should be lie within you know RB0 to RB100. Okay, so in that way we can try to assess the material performance. Now, here, uh, main sir, the main... Rockwell S scale to use for Rockwell S scale to use for any material for any material. Any material, but just preliminary hmm. testing at journal, just preliminary testing at journal, preliminary testing at journal. But the problem is problem that it hurts you know, uh, soft material to so hard material you know, compare for when then Rockwell a scale will give uh, less conservative results why less conservative result because uh, Rockwell a scale or B scale but C scale G to teach me down again to my first load to get fixed for the other so to me John or Jay how to soft material okay the number of indentation code was of material of the higher load who got to interfere for the indentation to obviously could be she have a high load apply for secretary how to me make the work with a high load apply for a general depth of indentation that to be see where I say that I will give you the task for that say I want in will it be the one task for with the one in will result of what to reading is so for the your in will result of reading is so for the time to be confused with it it actually material indentation where hardness result is in a in the result of each so then you cannot easily compare okay but preliminary if you do or if you uh, properly adjust the load and then you will get some values and um, uh, like Rockwell a values and based on that you can you can set or 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 you can choose the other testing process like Rockwell B and Rockwell C let's say uh, 150 kilo to load choose for the first software material and then to the daily depth of indentation to cook busy way at the even work at the time they had said you have to come out of value to have to only be see us here but only commerce in the accordingly to me choose could the product particular testing process like rock will be and rock will in scale something like that now here is the limitations for the rock will test means Though it is uh, this particular test process is very fast and industrially people follow this testing process, but the problem is uh, uh, whatever results you will get, it is not an uh, you know uh, accurate result or actual result. Just like 
uh, and you know the tungsten carbide is very hard so we suddenly assume that the that during deformations the diamond in uh, the, the the steel ball will not in uh, will not deform now <clears throat> now here uh, uh, for different materials we set the load applied load like for hard for for hard materials we set the load of 3000 kilo kgf and for softer material we can set the load of you know uh, uh, 500 kgf load okay uh, now uh, how we can measure that particular hardness okay the load the ball indented is 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 10 mm diameter steel ball okay now the problem is if we follow okay now uh, for for doing the or for measuring the hardness following the Brinell test uh, the detailed testing procedures are available uh, in the ASTM E10 standard so uh, if you want to uh, go study in details about these things you please follow this particular standard um, and, and and read it okay now here the thing is whenever we go for measuring the hardness renal testing process uh, then then this this precautions is uh, has to maintain like uh, the, the the thickness would be eight or ten times more than uh, the diameter of the indenter uh, just like the previous one and you have to take the hardness at the more or less at the middle portion and uh, of course you have to take the hardness at least three times okay means three indentation you have to put and then you have to take the average value now it is not that whenever you go for the indentation your indenter should not penetrate uh, at the sample or into the samples uh, much okay means there has certain uh, depth ratio okay and that particular depth ratio you can think of like 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 means the the indenter uh, uh, may not should not penetrate more than half of this particular indenter diameter if it is more than that half of the diameter then you know whatever surface area we will get you will get a fixed surface area okay if it is goes uh, beyond uh, the capital d okay half of capital d then uh, it will be very difficult to predict the hardness. Now, uh, so, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you hardness test? What do you do? 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 What do if you have 3,000 kilo load, you can see that the indentation and depth is half of capital D or equals to half of capital D. Then you can think of changing the load of 500 kilo load. Okay. And then uh, you can measure the hardness. But uh, the care has to be taken that your capital D by small d uh, or the small d by capital D. How do you vary? 3,000 or 5,000? And that it out of the power it are one sort of limitations of this particular test. Tahole mane mane jeta three thousand de jeta pa wo five thousand de to mane onno pe ya wo tokhon mane league bo kya mon kore. Se jono jokhon amra ek test kulo kori na amra ekta load kei follow kori like. Yeah. Miles, to me, steel air, jokhon hardness test kochcho na. Thor different steel air hardness test kochcho. Amra in general ki jane je steel air hardness ekto beshi hai, thay na? So, we can see that 3,000 kilo load is um, uh, small d by capital D. Small d means the indentation of the diameter. Uh, indentation is the impression of the form. So, we can see the top view. So, we can see the top view. So, we can see the circle. So, we can see the circle. It should have certain diameter. So, that particular diameter is small d. Here, you can clearly see the small d. But capital D is nothing but the indented diameter. Now, whenever we find that small d by capital D ratio that is more than 0 0.5, so that means the test is invalid. Okay, or greater than 0 0.5, so that means the test is invalid. And similarly, whenever we found that small d by capital D ratio is less than 0 0.25, then also your test is invalid. Why? Because in that particular cases, whatever you know hardness values you will get, you will get the overestimated values. Okay. Sir, STM standard is uh, sec second point as I got to less than for one time. Do you Can you please repeat whatever you have said? Hello? Uh, 
after doing the test what you have to do you have to measure this small d diameter then it is enough for measuring the hv values or for getting the hv values because then you have to put the values of small d and you know that what are the indented diameter you put the capital d values and you know the the applied load so you need to put the value of p and then you will get some hv values but before getting this hv values you have to be so sure that your small d by capital d ratio should be within that range now the problem is what will happen if we uh, if we get the ratio small d by capital d ratio is less than 0.25 now here um, you you you, you uh, compare um, uh, you compare these things by putting two different values like one case is you, you do it by yourself one case is uh, you put the the, the small d uh, which is 0.1 of capital d okay and another case is you put the small d uh, that is <clears throat> 0. Uh, 0. Uh, you know 3 into capital d okay so in the two cases what you will find you will find uh, like for the same samples one case is you have maintained uh, the, uh, the 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 load is let's say for 3000 kilo and one case is for the same material you have maintained the capital d let's say for 500 kilo okay so whenever you put uh, the load that is that is for 500 kilo then uh, uh, you obviously get the depth of indentations which is very very less okay uh, so let's say for that particular cases you will get the values of 0. 1 capital D the small d is 0. 0.1 capital D and uh, whenever you put the load of 3000 kilo you will find uh, the values of uh, uh, small d is let's say for 0. 0.3 capital D okay in these two cases you will get the different HV values okay though these samples is same sample but you are getting the two different values okay now the problem is whenever you are getting uh, the, <coughs> the the small d which is very very less in that particular cases uh, what will happen uh, means the last the, the strain hardening uh, part is actually less contributing whereas uh, in case of you know for um, for getting the higher d values small d values there is much more significant plastic deformations has happened okay so that is why uh, the the depth of indentation is is much more prominent as compared to uh, the small d which you are getting very very less values because uh, if you follow or if you recall the stress strain diagram then you know if you just uh, put the load such that it just cross the yield strength of let's say yield strength values and yield strength values uh, a little bit ill strain has covered like uh, let's say your ill strength is 500 mpa and uh, you go beyond 500 mpa to 520 or 520 mpa okay and another case is you go beyond 550 mpa so in these two cases you will find that uh, in two cases two different amount of strain hardening has happened okay initial cases whatever strain hardening has happened uh, it is very very less okay but in other cases the strain hardening which happened is very significant okay so that is why uh, initial cases if you uh, if you repeal the elastic recovery part then your then your permanent deformation uh, the net permanent deformation which is very very less and that is why if you put the values of small d it will give some overestimated values okay it will give the hv values which is very very large large values okay uh, that means it will wrongly predict it and it will say that uh, your material gives the higher hardness values but but suddenly it is not okay uh, so that is why we try to the people have maintained or people have restricted the ratio small d by capital d that is uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 okay <clears throat> is that clear yes sir yes sir yes, yes sir but that is also create some problems okay means uh, uh, create some problem means uh, it is actually depending on depend on the load okay so that is a problem for Brinell hardness test uh, as you said that if we increase the load or if we decrease the load that means we are manually changing the small d okay uh, and uh, we cannot and uh, and uh, 
uh, it is very difficult to to, uh, to to compare for different materials hardness like if we compare the material different material hardness uh, then maybe certain cases you will find that uh, the 300 kilo load is 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 the use of 300 kilo load is very accurate is inaccurate okay because um, certain cases whenever we are getting the small d which is large which is more than 0 0.5 okay small d by capital d ratio small more than 0 0.5 uh, then that will create some problem okay then we have to reduce the load so same machines you have to change the load cell okay and um, so that is the problem so in order to avoid that uh, you know people go for the further development and they try to, they have developed the different testing process like vicar's testing process vicar hardness testing process so i will come um, later on these things now in laboratory scale uh, the problem is um, laboratory scale you cannot maintain the load of 3000 kilo for a small machines okay so then we generally maintain the load uh, based on the ratio of uh, you know p by capital d ratio okay p by capital d ratio so then uh, we can manipulate the load here in this particular equations you will find that uh, this sort of hardness values is is uh, uh, is proportional to the p by capital d ratio okay capital d square actually capital d square ratio you can you can uh, you know simplify these equations uh, these shaded equations in terms of uh, the the um, in terms of the cos phi how we can do that if you see this particular geometry the indentation geometry then you will find that um, this indentation has certain relations with the angle of indentation okay that is phi okay so here if you find the capital D with small d, the relations between capital D and small d, then you will find that this, this small d is related with the capital D, um, capital D by, by the sine phi or the cos phi, something like that. Okay. Now, if you just replace the small d or uh, with in, in terms of the capital D, then you finally come up with this sort of equation. Okay. Uh, this is the angle of phi. So you can easily transform uh, the this, the, or you can easily simplify these equations in terms of the cos phi or sine phi. Okay. So here, finally, you will get these equations, and uh, here you can find out that HB is proportional to the p by d square when the phi is constant. Okay. So here you need to keep it in mind that your phi should be constant in each and every test. Now, if you are able to maintain uh, the constant angle, then you can change. Uh, the load according to the indented diameter uh, because initially I have said that whenever you put the load either 500 kilo or 300 kilo based on the sample 3000 kilo based on the sample hardness but in that particular cases you have to maintain the indented diameter of 10 mm okay but if you don't have the capacity to maintain the load of 500 kilo or 3000 kilo then you can reduce the load by reducing the uh, you know indented diameter okay by following this ratio okay um, like you can maintain the low uh, diameter 2.5 mm irrespective of 10 mm or 5 mm irrespective of 10 mm okay then you can adjust the load and uh, it can be suitable and you can use it uh, which will be suitable for laboratory purpose <laughs> so here sir by maintaining that constant pressure for that constant phi Mm -hmm. won't that uh, small uh, small d by capital d ratio remain constant like that is why i'm saying uh, that is why i'm saying that the phi value should be constant a uh, particular equation a geometry that we have on a jody to me phi take constant record obviously the d by capital d uh, should be constant na? Yes, sir. the problem to solve small d by capital d to the range of my fixed on the no, I can't do it. Load take change kuchu. Mane load take manipulate kuchu by manipulating the uh, the the indented diameter. Take a say. But the problem is to me, ki kore sure hobe je hoy fight to ma constant thagbe each and every cases. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Mane sir, P one by D one take to amra fix rakchi. Fight take constant. Yeah. Uh, fight take constant. Take. Mane theoretically amra chinta kuchhi je jodi amra fight take constant rakhi. Thaole, amra p ta ke change korte by changing the d capital d. But the problem is problem is 
whenever you change this small d uh, the, the the capital d from 10 to let's say 5 5 mm or 2.5 mm amra each and every case ke phi ta ke fixed rakhte parchi so that is the problem amra oh, theoretically think chinta korche thik ache but practically is it okay or is it feasible thik ache yes sir yes Jodio eta hoyto ekta same material er khetre possible kintu jokhon amra hoyto two different material nilam ekta hoyto 0.2% carbon steel nilam ekta 8% 0.8% carbon steel nilam tahole ei dutto steel er khetre ki amra soman mane equal rate e ki amra change korte pare like 0.8% carbon steel e jokhon amra 3000 kilo load nilam ar 10 mm diameter ball diameter nilam tokhon je phi angle ta pelam তারপরে যদি আমরা 500 কিলো সরি ধরো 200 কিলো লোড নি করেসপন্ডিংলি আমরা যদি ডিটাকে চেঞ্জ করি তাহলে কি सेम ফাই থাকবে যদি আমরা सेम টেস্টটাকে আমরা যদি মাইল স্টিলে করি আর ইউ গেটিং মাই পয়েন্ট यस স্যার সো দ্যাট ইজ দা প্রবলেম ওকে ইফ ইউ ডু দ্যাট টেস্ট ফর सेम ম্যাটেরিয়াল দেন ইউ ক্যান ইজিলি ইজিলি থিংক অফ অর ইউ ক্যান কোয়াইটলি মেইনটেইন দি অ্যাকিউরেসি ওকে বাট ইফ ইউ চেঞ্জ দি ম্যাটেরিয়াল then maybe your uh, phi value will not be fixed yes sir so then each and every test you have to check the small d by capital d ratio okay to validate your test but uh, you know people uh, did the test uh, n number of tests like um, different um, uh, tests they have done and they have tried to plot it uh, plot the data like uh, age uh, bhn versus depth of indentation and they found that whenever this ratio reaches you know 0. Um, 0.375 uh, they find that uh, the value bhn values actually uh, uh, fixed bhn value become fixed okay it is not changing uh, with load much okay uh, just like i am drawing a simple things then I think it will be clear to you. Can you see uh, that I'm drawing something? Yes, sir. So, tumla jodi BHN value ta ke jodi y axis se rakho. Each and value take a y axis or x axis or the p value take a rakho. Then what we will find, you will find that um, at smaller load, um, maybe the value will be high, okay. But whenever you increase the load at certain period of time, it gives a no sorry, pull to load. Okay, So maybe at certain small d by capital D ratio, you will find that the BHN value become fixed. But another two cases, uh, you can change that the values is gradually changing. Okay. So that is why actually people such, um, suggest that if you follow the small d by capital D ratio, or if you maintain the small d by capital D ratio at that at a particular range or at a particular value, then you will be able to. Uh, uh, you will be able to compare the hardness data for different material also. Now here in this particular slide, you know, uh, people have uh, have found uh, um, a, a suitable ratio uh, for different material. Like for steel and cast iron, they found that if you maintain the P by capital D ratio that is 30, um, then you will find the BHN number that is over, you know, over uh, 100 BHN. Okay, and uh, if you maintain the P by capital D ratio, D square ratio 10 for copper and aluminum alloys, okay, then you will get the values of 30 to 200. Now here the problem comes, okay. Like one case is if, if you compare the hardness between steel and copper, na? so, and if you maintain the P by capital D ratio square, that is 30, one case is another case is 10. Now if two cases you have found that whenever you go for hardness testing of steel, then you get the value, let's say, one, uh, 150, okay? 
and another case is uh, for copper and alloys here it says that the hardness values will vary from 30 to 200 here also you found the value let's say for 150 so then uh, you will say that uh, the hardness of copper and hardness of steel both are same it is not okay so that is the main problem for Brinell hardness test okay so you, that is the limitations also for Brinell hardness test but if you compare um, for uh, within the soft material like copper alloys copper aluminum alloys and copper and aluminum then you can easily separate the hardness of two different metals or two or three or more different metals okay similarly if you compare the hardness of steel then you can easily compare by che checking the bhn number or, and by maintaining the p by d square of 30. okay so sir, if you want to compare among steel uh, say if you want to compare the bhn of cast iron and copper the one that the definite absolute scale the pachina no secretary absolute scale pachina okay secretary tumra bhabte paro je moon number ta jeta chilo na sir that is suitable for you you will not get a particular value but you can easily compare that which material is hard and which material is soft means if you do scratching um, uh, on a material surface by using other metal uh, and if uh, one metal is able to scratch um, over the other metals then you can easily compare here also um, <clears throat> uh, if you find out the bhn number then it will uh, it will create some confusion okay um, that is why you cannot uh, compare the bhn number you, you cannot compare the hardness by looking at bhn number okay you you need okay. to choose the other testing process but you can compare the hardness uh, by seeing the bhn number if you are able to evaluate the hardness only considering the soft material or by only considering the hard material once comparison to put them harder is on a harder and softer material is on a softer material but you cannot compare the bhn number or hardness by seeing the bhn number um, uh, by choosing the soft material as well as the hard material it is not possible so for that you have to do you have to go for yeah you have to go for other testing process so here i have said the limitation that what are, are the limitation for bhn number okay um, but uh, statistically or uh, if you follow the <clears throat> numbers then uh, one can also assess uh, that your testing process is correct or not like uh, when your bhn number is greater than 650 the test is not good okay you cannot select the, uh, the brinell hardness testing process okay means uh, irrespective of um, seeing the d by small d by capital d ratio um, uh, again if you are able to find out the bhn number which is greater than 650 then you should avoid the uh, you know <clears throat> bhn testing process or brinell hardness testing process okay you have to um, shift from uh, this testing process to another suitable testing process okay <clears throat> and uh, of course each and every testing process hardness testing process or indentation testing process you have to be very careful about the gap between two indentation because of the interactions of strain hardening or strain hardening effect will reflect on your test result <clears throat> Why strain hardening effect uh, will interfere your test result? Do you know why strain hardening effect will interfere your test result? Hello, are you listening? Yes, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Third of the poster. Eh? Dorotomi act indentation Kurocho uh, giving some plastic deformation at this particular range, correct? Now again you unload it. Okay. So Jokon to me unload Kurwe, Tokon elastic deformation part of recovery have. But the plastic deformation part will retain there. Now again, <clears throat> again, if you reload that, now so that you know permanent deformations will will be there. And then if you again reload it, then um, then then you know your uh, 
uh, material will start to uh, material will, uh, will will start to yield at even higher loading higher load okay এমন নয় যে একটা আবার এখান থেকে কন্টিনিউশন হবে এরকম নাও হতে পারে ওকে বিকজ সাম প্লাস্টিক ডিফরমেশন হ্যাজ হ্যাপেন এন্ড দ্যাট ক্রিয়েট সাম ইউ নো স্ট্রেন হার্ডেনিং এন্ড দ্যাট ইনক্রিজেস দ্য স্ট্রেন ইউ নো লোড বিয়ারিং ক্যাপাসিটি ওকে সো দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াই ইফ ইউ এগেইন ইউ নো রিলোড ইট দেন দেন ইট উইল অ্যাকচুয়ালি এনহ্যান্স দ্য স্ট্রেন্থ অফ আ ম্যাটেরিয়াল ওকে যেমন ধরো তুমি কোনো ম্যাটেরিয়ালের উপরে তুমি হ্যামারিং করছো হ্যাঁ so so before hammering whatever hardness would be there after hammering you will get your the strength of the material will increase or the hardness of the material will increase okay so here i am talking about only the yield strength not tensile strength because tensile strength will remain same but your uh, you know yield strength will change okay your yield strength will change and um, uh, each and every case as means depending on your plastic deformation your yield strength will vary okay so that is why i am saying that whenever you put some indentations over the sample surface you should not put over over that particular indentation let's say you have put an indentation at this particular position and then reload it and then again you are putting some indentation at this particular positions or just adjacent to this particular positions so what will happen at nearby regions some elastic deformation has happened as well as plastic deformation has happened now again if we put some indentation that means if you plastically deform at this particular zone then uh, your past previous plastic deformations will uh, will increase the load bearing capacity or increase the resistance for permanent deformation and that is why at the second case you will find the hardness values which is which is high as compared to the previous indentation okay <clears throat> so these things you have to keep it mind each and every cases so it is residual stress the case is strength they are actually correlated with each other this is obviously residual stress because um mane or modde residual stress jodi roye jay ba residual strain because jo plastic deformation cheta hocche na permanent deformation hocche tar jonno ki hocche residual stress ta or modde roye jacche Uh, okay. similarly residual strain is also there because um, you know all the deformations are not recovering okay some deformation is happening permanently uh, uh, whenever we compare com we, we we consider about this localized compressive deformation okay similarly jokhon bulk deformation jokhon hobe tokhono some residual stress will retain there okay sir so now here as compared to the rock oil test one limitation is there like here surface preparation should be very smooth okay because here you need to measure the small diameter okay indentation diameter uh, very precisely if you are not able to measure the small t very precisely then you will get the wrong value so that is why in order to get the uh, the clear small t values you have to prepare the samples uh, surface Uh, which is quite smooth and um, uh, uh, the 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 edge of the indenter uh, uh, edge of the indentation should be very sharp uh, such that you can quite accurately measure the small d values now the advantage is it is widely accepted uh, industrially uh, this sort of test can be uh, can be followed okay because they the guys know that what should be the uh, the ratio uh, for a particular loading conditions or a particular force and um, and they know that uh, if we follow this sort of load then the data will be comparable okay so that is why uh, according to them it is highly acceptable or widely used okay uh, and the values gives quite accurate because whenever they compare the data they only follow a particular load as well as particular moles by capital d ratio now each and every cases whatever hardness you are getting you can correlate with the tensile strength properties whether it is in terms of stress or whether it is in terms of strain okay so whenever you want to correlate this or people actually collect the data hardness data vhn data and then they first evaluate the strength data and they try to make it some correlation and they found that if you have the vhn data with you and if you have the tensile data for the same material they found that uh, that uh, the multiplying factor is 500 in psi scale okay so uh, this was uh, 500 this is derived or is empirically 
Mm-hmm. Empirically, empirically. Obviously, whatever equations we try to develop, no, so that is the empirical equations. First, we try to get the data, we plot the data in, in scatter form, and then we try to make, uh, we try to join those, uh, you know, scattered data, or we try to, you know, uh, uh, try to fit those data, okay, uh, following a suitable, you know, e- equations, okay, which gives the, um, which gives the, the RMS, RMS error, which is very, very less, okay, the R value. I think you have all uh, known about that, how we can uh, fit the data. So if you know, then it will be quite easier to you to understand. Yes, sir. So that is basically an empirical formula. Okay. Now another sort of hardness testing process is also available, like uh, irrespective of taking the surface area, <coughs> Mears has developed uh, as process uh, where you, they have taken the project area of the Indian. So, so here also they follow the same formula, uh, but the thing is, uh, uh, irrespective of small d, where the d was the indentation, you know, diameter uh, or uh, uh, the, the indentation diameter. Here also that small d is uh, used, but um, certainly they have not, in this particular case, it has not measured the indentation surface area. They have just taken the small d values and they have calculated certain numbers. So they have find out certain numbers and um, uh, and for measuring the hardness, uh, they have tried to find out the different numbers and they can compare with each other. Okay, and uh, and uh, that is not much difference between the Brinell hardness number, but certain problems they have encountered as compared to the Brinell hardness number. Because in case of Brinell hardness number, if you go for uh, measuring the hardness for any steel and for cold work material, okay, or the material which you priorly deform. So in these two two different materials, whatever hardness values you are getting following the BHN, so that values may be you know getting some erroneous data. Okay, in, in case of um, uh, for gold work material. Okay, but that can be sort out if you follow the uh, the process like mere hardness process. Okay, why this is happen? This will happen because. Um, because in this particular case, it's like, um, first of all, Brinell hardness testing process, uh, uh, we, we always think of that elastic recovery part. But, uh, you know, if you go for uh, uh, hardness testing for cold work material, you previously deform that material, you previously give some permanent deformation, means it uh, previously, you know, uh, um, uh, previously uh, uh, deformed in such a way that it has sufficient residual strain okay then again you are deforming it so the elastic recovery part will be uh, will be insignificant okay uh, so that that means in that particular cases whatever value you will get or whatever you know the indentation surface area you are measuring so that uh, values will be give, will give some you know overestimated values okay so that is why uh, the numbers that we will get that is that will be uh, create some problems or that will uh, create some confusions when you compare it uh, these values with the annual uh, sample data okay any sample hardness value so in order to encounter that um, Mears uh, said that if you just take the indenter diameter not the depth of the indentation then I think uh, in that particular cases, whatever value you will get, you will uh, this particular values is quite accurate or quite representable. Okay, as compared to the samples, as compared to the the annual sample hardness. Okay, uh, so 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 in that way, uh, people try to uh, develop the different testing process to encounter certain problems um, as compared to the previous testing methods. Okay, now here. Uh, uh, Mayors has also additionally put some relations uh, with P and small d. Okay, small d means the uh, the diameter of the indenter. Okay, and then uh, it tries to make a correlation such that how uh, the, the the small d is varying with the capital D for different material like for you know for cold work material or for annual material, and uh, uh, this is also an empirical equations. And he said that whatever you know. Uh, exponential exponential term exponent terms is getting or 
the end terms is getting uh, he placed some values or he put some values okay for annealed material and for uh, strain hardened material or the cold work material uh, and and um, if if you if anyone follow this particular value then they can easily compare the hardness of these two different material okay quite accurately and you also can be able to choose a suitable load by which um, it will be able to maintain so, the k value will be given in the question yeah yeah k value should be given okay as i said this is the empirical values na that is the empirical values uh -huh. uh, k value is a material uh -huh. constant just like the flow stress uh, that i showed you for the tensile testing process like sigma is equal to k epsilon to the power n uh, so similar actually empirical formula he tries to place okay amra jokhon kono investigation kore like material property investigation kore na so tokhon amra ki kore different properties amra uh, evaluate korar chesta kori then we try to correlate with each other okay dhoro amra hardness jemon testing jokhon kori hardness er shonge tensile er ekta correlation ber korar chesta kori je gulo boye amra pai na so like ei je relation ta amra pelam so hoto ekhane once few people have studied and few people have uh, tried to match the tensile strength with bhn and they found that the multiplying factor 500 but it is not uh, you know it is not uh, follow for all cases okay some materials follow the different relationship like some materials follow the multiplying factor irrespective of 400 uh, irrespective of 400 irrespective of 500 or certain cases you will find that 300 irrespective of 500 so that will depend means how much in investigation is going on and how you are investigating okay so similarly uh, as per mir they have found this sort of relations and where he said that if you follow this relations um for ideal steel then you have to put the the the, the exponent term that is endless term that is 2.5 okay and uh, you know whatever d values you are getting so you have to put the d values and if you if you uh, if you uh, you know use the previously experimental k values then you can directly put the k values and you can easily get uh, the 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 the, uh, the load values or you can easily set the load values but if you want to do these things by your own then you have to do uh, an n number of tests and then you have to evaluate or you have to make a uh, make a table like uh, one columns you put the p values another columns you put the small d values okay and then you have to make a plot a scatter plot p versus capital d okay uh, sorry small d and then and then if you if you take the ln values okay ln p by ln d then uh, you will get a straight line and then whatever slope uh, you are find, you, you are getting so that particular slope is nothing but the end dash value okay so people in this way people try to find out uh, people try to make a correlation and uh, as per mir they found that that particular end as the slope that is 2.5 for any material and for strain hardened material or cold material cold work material they found that the slope is 2 okay and whatever intersect they found so that particular value dictates the k that is the material constant or the resistance of the material metals to deform or to penetrate okay so just like the flow curve that we have derived previously or the people have derived previously but the important is that uh, there has certain similarity um uh, between uh, this load versus displacement curve load versus you know depth of indent uh, the 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 indentation diameter um, uh, with the flow stress versus strain okay and how they are correlating with each other uh, here whatever indest you are getting na so that indest is nothing but a summation of the strain hardening exponent okay strain hardening exponent means n uh, that we generally found out Uh, by doing the tensile test and then you have to add some you know some some point uh, some values like in this particular cases uh, the n values will be like um uh, like 0.5 and uh, you have to you have to add uh, the values of 2 okay then you will find out the values is 2.5 okay certain cases you will find that your n values would be let's say for you know 0.4 0.3 okay for different materials and then uh, if you add some 
some factors or some uh, some values then you will find out the index values okay that means people try to correlate flow stress with the the load versus uh, you know um, the diameter of the indentation okay um, and then they try to make a plot and they try to find out that how depending on the stress and strain how the load versus depth of in uh, sorry indentation diameter is changing okay in that way people try to assess the material performance okay so here is the relations like indentation with this spherical means if you use a spherical spherical ball then how this load is related with uh, the 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 sigma zero that is the yield strength of a material so so here you can find out that uh, the for indentations whatever p you are getting uh, so that p may be uh, three times of the yield strength of the material okay if you use this spherical ball indenter okay and similarly uh, you can correlate the small d by capital d ratio with the tensile strain okay and if you make a plot like by changing the small d by capital d ratio you can easily get a plot okay and you can easily uh, make a plot like where you can put the stress one axis and strain another axis and uh, you can um, you can superimpose the plot with the load versus you know the the small d okay or uh, the load versus strain okay and then you can check that how strain stress strain is changing as well as how the hardness is changing parallelly so that particular relations actually developed by the table Okay, which is a famous, you know, scientist. Now, previous testing process, we see that uh, the load is change means loads. We need to change certain cases. Uh, certain cases we need to change the wall diameter. Okay, uh, certain cases uh, we need to prepare the sample surface quite accurately, or smooth sample preparation is required. Okay. Uh, certain cases we need to maintain that d is my small d by capital d ratio to get the accurate value okay so all these certain cases you know we need to change the like if i follow the rockwell testing process depending on the hardness we need to select the rock whether it will be rockwell b or rockwell c so so there are a lot of problems are available okay so in order to overcome those problems people also choose or people also develop as a testing process where we can avoid you know those uh, you know load cell changing you know maintenance of the small d by capital d ratio okay um, and uh, all these things you can you can avoid okay similarly the thickness of a specimen okay you can also avoid uh, those restriction okay so so uh, these things has been uh, has been checked uh, by or the, these things has been developed uh, in 1925 by developing the Baker hardness testing process. In, in Brinell test, uh, people have found that if we maintain this small d by capital D ratio that is 0 0.375, um, so, so uh, uh, Vickers, they have actually developed his testing process uh, with the continuation of the Brinell hardness, accurate Brinell hardness testing process, where this small d by capital D was 0 0.375. HV is what? HV means hard, weaker hardness. Amra jaman hardness er khetre jaman BHN number the represent kuch chilam. Weaker hardness er khetre amra HV the represent kori, or thoba BHN the represent kori. Thik ache. So whatever numbers we will get following weaker hardness, that actually represent the hardness of a material. Okay. Now. <coughs> If we compare the hardness number um, or hardness values, uh, so in Rockwell we are getting just a number, but in in Vickers or in Brinell or in Mayers, we will get some values whose have certain units. That is, um, maybe it is milli, uh, millimeter square, the value per millimeter square. Okay, so it has certain uh, you know importance in 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 designing of a material. Okay, if we have a certain numbers. Uh, having up certain units, but if we have certain numbers, that is the relative parameter. Okay, uh, we cannot directly put that particular numbers to represent the hardness. Okay, though certainly or very quickly we can assess the material, you know, hardness uh, following the Rockwell uh, A, B, or C. Uh, but uh, we should uh, 
um, get a particular number um, such that we can easily uh, easily understand that how hard the material is and how soft the material is so in order to do that vickers have developed the testing methods by which he fixed the small d by capital d ratio and that is 0. you know 375 okay and in order to fix that he used certain indian term that is called uh, the the pyramidal the pyramidal indian term diamond base indian term okay what well, square base diamond pyramid square base diamond pyramid so here you can see clearly that how it looks like so here it has the full Sorry? surface have a sir bolchi je mane eta hoye gelo sir today can we stop here airport se amader 12 ta ki arekta opening okay 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 so amra eta tole next din i continue korbo ha je vikar harness testing process ta okay thank you sir ei pdf gulo ektu pathiye den pdf ektu pathiye den ami eta complete howar pore pathabo ha vikar harness testing process ba aro je je testing process ache like micro indentation nano indentation okay and okay, how we can okay. differentiate micro and nano indentation what are the basic purpose of going for micro and nano indentation so uh, i will describe all those things then i will share this particular slide theek okay, ache okay sir